How strange everything is. What an advent. What a year. How strange. How weird everything, right? This inevitable measure, at least many of them, make everything so different that it seems we are living in a real world. At least, I cannot get used to it, even though I'm very lucky and living in a practical, isolated place, which makes that risk I take less. But how strange, how weird the whole world is. We in Spain, other from the terrible financial crisis, are living a situation, I'm not going to describe it now, but at least as in Spanish, it worries me enormously on a level political, a social level, and an economic level. But if you look around, the situation is terrible. Think about the situation in the U.S., for example. But how is Venezuela? In the midst of this, accentuated, aggravated by this epidemic, the real still unexplained. In the midst of this, we are already about to celebrate Christmas, second Sunday of Advent. And I think, I say to myself, will there be a way to get around something good out of evil? I know that this can be upsetting to someone when one lost a loved one without being able to say goodbye to him because the death is something that reaches everyone. It is not that we are not dying now because of the virus. Well, but this is different. You have not been able to be by his side and say goodbye. You're not able to be by his side, of course. How can you tell a person that is like this, that we must get something good out of this? How can you tell him? We are going to get something out of it that he might even find offensive, and yet we have the duty. We have the duty to dedicate, to teach, and to help others not to sink in such a difficult and even extreme circumstances as the one we're living right now. And where are we? Get the strange. Remember the first Christmas. What were those people waiting for when they were waiting for the Messiah? Perhaps for a liberator to throw the Romans out? Well, but what were the shepherds were waiting for? The angels appeared. Or the wise men who came from the east? The shepherds couldn't expect the Messiah to improve the price of their sheep. Well, or increase the value of the lambs. And the wise men didn't need money. On the contrary, they brought to the child. What did they expect? I mean, this crisis, terrible, may have a positive aspect. And it, and it is to help us focus on what really matters. Like the parable Jesus tells when he says that the, the man who has built his house on a rock, the rock is Christ. That man, his house stands up the storms. The winds will come, the storm will fall, the house will still stand. And he who has built his house on sand will carry it away in the storm. We are being subject to a storm. And what we have to do is to see if our foundation is well laid in Christ. And if not, to strengthen quickly because the house may resink or is sinking with depression. For instance, I have read that in, ja in Japan, in a single month, there have been more suicides, more deaths by suicide they're all the victims of the virus since the epidemic began in March. 
There are many people who are desperate, and for desperation, the medicine is hope. And hope is not, and it will be good if we also were, I repeat, the price of wool or the little lambs for the farmers were increased, or that the rain more, or that the job came out to cure you. Hope is Christ, and hope is eternal life, and this storm has to purify us of all their hopes that, in the end, prove so be fragile, so little, because not even the rich man has been able to avoid dying or following ill. So, despite the difficulties, let us bring out good out of evil, and for that good to be a deep conversion. If you were to die tomorrow, God forbid, but at this point, we all know loved ones who have died from the virus, all of us, parishioners here, a good example. If you were to die tomorrow, what would be more important? When I came from Rome on, on Thursday to have my heart checked, by the cardiologist, my father died from a heart attack in the operation room. And genetic thing, something that was genetic, that is, that was congenetic. I thought maybe I had something similar. You came on the plane with so much protection, so much. You go to the doctor, I've been there on Friday, that is. And you think, if I had to die tomorrow, what would I really care about? Being in God's grace, it is what we we'll really care about. I will also care about having done good and being able to continue doing it. But look, I'm going to see if I can still give on before I die. Well, today I'm going to send money for a bishop in Venezuela who doesn't even have to do the cancer treatment. Yes, the stints are there. Well, if I had to die tomorrow, what would I care? Being in grace of God, really, this is happiness to us, which is calamity. I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want anyone to feel offended because there are always something people who are a little sensitive and feel very upset who said that nothing good can come out of this. Let's see if something can come out. A purification of interest a purification of motivation for yourself before God. If I had been here on the first Sunday of Advent, I have always told you every year in Advent and on Ash Wednesday, get ready to celebrate this Christmas. Ash Wednesdays will be this Easter. It is was the first Christmas of your life, as if it was the last Christmas of your life as if it was the only Christmas of your life. And this, these terrible circumstances, remind us of it. Get ready to celebrate this Christmas, as if it were the first or the last, not the only one, because you have already done many, not the first, but who knows if it's the last Christmas of your life. It places you in another dimension, in a supernatural dimension, and gives you importance to the things that really matter. And the rest is not, they are unimportant. But deep down, what is the account? So, how to prepare for Christmas, first of all? What does Jesus bring us? He brings us, I repeat, hope. I didn't raise the price of the lamb. He didn't raise the price of the wool. The baby in the cave of Bethlehem was poorer than the shepherds. It was there who brought the little they had, and yet he gave them the treasure, the great treasure that the baby gives the mother or the father when he's born hope. Prepared to receive the God of hope. Al Dios de la esperanza. Hope in what? La esperanza en, qué? in fact, 
You know that the Virgin Mary is called Our Lady of the Hope, and the last week before birth, Mary of the, of the Hope, hope in, what? in eternal life. We are not afraid of death. We don't, because we know for sure, absolutely, that there is eternal life, hope in eternal life, hope that our sins are forgiven when we tell God with a sorrow heart, forgive me, Lord, and when afterwards, hopefully soon, confession can be made. I don't say it here because fortunately it is continuously done every day, but there are countries, places, where it has been a long time since have been able to confess hope in eternal life, hope in divine mercy, and hope that you are not alone. We are never alone, not even those who have to go through the order of the operation room of the UCI for even die. We are never alone. A Catholic is never alone. She is always with God. Come to me, you who are tired and burdened, and I will relieve you. We believe in the God of hope, in the God who opens the gates of heaven for us, and the child comes to give us hope. We will not have other things, perhaps, that we had other years. We cannot imagine how the world is. So many people who don't even have to eat. The situation is really horrible in so many places, but no one can ever take away the hope in God's love and in eternal life. Then, how should we prepare for the arrival of this God of hope? I advise you to do three things in the two short, scare weeks that remain. Prayer, you should not reach Christmas without making a daily prayer and without having read the childhood text of St. Luke's Gospel. Nobody has an excuse. Everybody has their tablet or his computer or his telephone. St. Luke's Gospel, daily prayer. What did it mean? How did they tell it? How did they live it? How did the Virgin lift it? St. Joseph, how did he lift it when he arrived in Bethlehem and could not find a place for the inn? Prayer to realize the immense love of God. And that it serves as comfort. We are not alone. Second, humbleness. With the Virgin, humbleness, teacher. And why humbleness in a special way in Advent and this Advent, because this is a humiliation to have to walk with this mask. It is a humiliation. Imagine the humiliation that is that you have no work, that you have to ask for help, the humiliation that is for you to ask for assistance for yourself because you are old, that you are sick. Well then, Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus does not say, He who is humiliated will be exalted. He doesn't say that. We must be careful with the words of the Gospel. They are words of God. Jesus says, He who humbles himself, no, who is humble. Where is the difference? He who humbles himself seeks humility or accepts humility. You are humiliated, accept it, bear it, accept it. Don't be proud. You have a problem at home. You have a problem at work. You have a problem humbleness. Let us say this, this terrible year, as an exercise of humility, which knocks us down from our thrones, from our thrones where we were at, thinking we were gods. At the end, a virus, check it out, turns the world upside down. He turns it upside down. What are we? In my house, I'm so lucky there in Rome, on the outskirts of Rome where I live. I am lucky to see the sea 
And to see the sky, as you can only see it, where there is the sea, because here you can see a little bit be between the buildings. When I pray the rosary, walking every day, when it doesn't rain by the sea, by the shore, I always meditate on this psalm. What is meant for you to remember him, the human being, to give him power? What are we? We are nothing, really, a virus ends with you. Even if you are strong, young, less perhaps than the old man, no matter. Humbleness, as Mary, who didn't complain, where were the promises when she arrived in Bethlehem and there was nowhere to give birth to her first child? She was a very young girl whose mother was not by her side, not even her cousin Elizabeth, who was far away. There she was with the good men, St. Joseph, holy men, in a strange place, in a sheep cave, and there she gave birth to the Savior of the world. And she didn't now complain. She didn't tell God, let's see, the Messiah must have servants, a palace, a lot of hands. How can I get through this with myself? Humility. This situation, this problem, which has so many faces, not only physical, economic, social, not understanding, I accept it, Lord. I don't understand it, but I accept it. I trust you. I am with you. Prayer, humbleness, and a third thing, family. The family. Really. When you say or think tomorrow, I may be infected, the day after I may be dead. When you give importance to the things they really have importance, and one of them after God is family. Many of you are not going to be able to celebrate the traditional Christmas Eve dinner or Christmas lunch with everyone because you will not be able to move around because there will be no money perhaps because of their circumstances. In many places, it is that they will not be able to make even a little extra because they don't have any. But the family can be united, even if they are not together. They can be united. Take care of your family. After God is the most secret thing you have. And taking care of the family means paying a price, the price of patience, also the price of humbleness, the price of forgiveness that is asked or given. The price of being attentive, attentive to make peace, to take the iron out of the situation, to speak well of the absent. I'm not saying that this will be the best Christmas of our lives, but maybe it can be such a different Christmas that it will be left us better off in the end. Live it as if it was your last. It won't be if God wants to be it. But if it were the last, if it were the last, please be in God's grace, in God's grace. Pray every day. Find time to be with the Lord. Read those few passages from St. Louis' Gospel. Take advantage of the circumstances, especially those that are humiliating for so many reasons to accept it and recognize that you are not God. You are not. Even if you think you are so important, you are not really. And take care of your family. Try to make it be united. Put love, put forgiveness, put reconciliation. Try for it to be united. And the fruit of that, it turns. It may lift in diversity for those who are sick, who are in hospitals perhaps alone, or simply don't even to make a little extra on Christmas Eve or Christmas, because he doesn't even have to move on every day. 
May God, the Blessed Virgin, help us.